Hey folks, it's Chris back. Um, it's a video that I was on the fence about doing, but um, seeing and enjoying Alan's uh, last vidbook video, <clears throat> um, I figured I'd give it a shot just just for Alan and Carm, who made Carm's made some amazing book videos. If you haven't seen them on his channel. Um, and some other people that have expressed some interest in, in maybe a book video. Um, so this is, this is my attempt at that. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I found that I think most record collectors that I've known in my life also love to read and also have a love of books as well. It seems to go hand in hand. I think a lot of record people have a love of all kinds of art, artistic expression, whether it's literature, film. A lot of people I know like love film. I know a lot of I have friends who are huge film people, uh, books, uh, art. Um, I'm no different. Um, you know, um, in fact, reading was probably my first real love, instilled in me by my mother when I was very young. Um, and uh, it's always been something I've always loved. Um, I'm just giving you a background on my history with books and whatnot. Um, and I always remember, I, I, I'm sure this is not an uncommon memory, but if you're of a certain generation or a certain age, um, every time we would go to the malls, um, which was a big event, uh, when I was growing up, you know, in the suburbs here in the uh, 70s, like late 70s, you know, late 70s, 80s. Um, I was, I, I didn't care about the mall at all. I only cared about two places, you know, two places in the mall, three in the mall. The bookstores, the record stores, and Hot Sam's pretzels, <laughs> which were amazing. I could still just it's just hot pretzels but when you're a kid it was it was like you know manna food manna from heaven um but yeah that that's usually I didn't you know they'd be like well we gotta get clothes for school I'm like yeah whatever <laughs> I'm gonna be at the point they knew where I was gonna be I'm like I would just I'm like yeah you guys do whatever you gotta do I'm gonna be I'm gonna be at music land or Sam Goody's or Rose Records or Walden Books, B.D. Dalton Books, Cooper Smith, Koch and Bertano's, all these, the age of like the, the book chains, um, which sadly are no more. Um, the last bookstore, the, the last places I really like to go for books and magazines was Borders, which is gone, and Tower, which is gone. Um, so all, all we have around here really is Barnes and Noble, which is, is okay. It is what it is, but it's not like it used to be when I was growing up. And of course the library is, um, as a kid, I spent a lot of time in the library. Um, our, I was telling Al in our particular library had, um, when I was growing up had these huge, uh, like wooden, um, like ta uh, hollowed out like tables, I guess. Um, and they were all full of free paperbacks. Like people would donate, or they, the, the library just had no room for. And that that went on for years. And you could come in there; anyone was free to take whatever they wanted within reason. I mean, you couldn't take everything. But I always, every time I would go as a kid, I would just gather up like a bag of paperbacks and, you know, I, I found, found a lot of great literature, not only classics, but things I didn't know at the time. Um, a lot of great, um, something that might be in there might be like a Michael Moorcock book, a great British sci-fi writer, things like that. Like it was just, it was wonderful. Um, and if I wasn't, it was too hot to play basketball or baseball you know I would just go to the library and just sit and pull books off the shelf um, things I was interested in topics that I wanted to read about things that interested me I, most of the things that I read were 
never on syllabuses in school. Nothing, I, in, you know, it was all stuff that was completely generally different from anything I had to read in school. Granted, there was some great literature on offer when I was in school as well, but I was always interested in things that like, hey, what's, you know, what's this about? Or things that were like more on the periphery, um, you know, kind of like I'm with music, same thing. Um, so I, you know, it used to blow my mind when I would um, sit at the English with the uh, English department teachers sometimes, because my mom worked at the school and uh, sit and talk with them a little bit, just shooting the shit and finding out like they were, they were so regimented into their particular degree, their studies. So like, I mean, I remember introducing my English, at least one of my English teachers had never heard of Arthur Rambeau. And I was like, really? You know, I was like, because the way in school, public school is so structured and so um, it's more concerned with indoctrination and not exploration. So anyways, I'm rambling. Uh, I'm just going to show a bunch of books and maybe say a word or two about them. Uh, just, this is just, um, I don't have as many books as I used to. I had to, when I moved, I gave away like an entire bookcase, unfortunately, kind of like Alan with his classical record story, which I semi regret, but yeah, I still have a, a nice bookcase full of books. Um, and I still occasionally pop into used bookstores when I'm around them or at half price books and I'll buy a book every once in a while, I'll look around. But uh, anyways, um, music in the background is just to have some music is this. Really beautiful, kind of not too obtrusive. Uh, okay, this is a book that I carry with me often, usually when I'm waiting at a doctor's office or anywhere I have to wait, because it's small and portable, and I've read this a bunch of times. This is uh, City Lights Pocket Poets Anthology, edited by Ferlinghetti, Lawrence Ferlinghetti. This is just a a little book of um, poetry by the Beats, um, the who's who of the movement. Um, you know, always read this. Um, I've, I've been interested, I got interested in the Beats when I was like really young, like 13, 14 years old. Um, so I have that as a companion. Uh, this should be fairly well known, The Way of Zen by Alan Watts. This is uh, specifically for Alan. I love this uh, book. This is a UK class. This is a classic, especially I would think in the UK. Uh, the Outsider by Colin Wilson. It's a great book. I've read this a couple times. Um, I like Colin Wilson actually quite a bit. Um, he did some really interesting writing, especially on um, true crime and the occult and things like that. And uh, this is considered his kind of his kind of high point, high watermark, the outsider, pretty much uh, seminal work on alienation, creativity, and the modern mindset. Great book. Speaking of art, I love, I have a ton of art books, so, but I only pulled maybe one or two. This is a really cool book. Um, Una Semaine de Bonte is a surrealistic novel, collage novel by uh, the great Max Ernst. I love Max Ernst. Every time I hear the name Max Ernst, I always think of a song by Mission of Burma. It has a song called Max Ernst, but I love Ernst. This is a really, really cool um, collage novel by Ernst, one of the great surrealists. Speaking of what we're hearing, the portable North American Indian reader. This is really good. It's a penguin book, a more modern one. Uh, it's just myths, poetry, stories from Cher the Cherokee, Iroquois, Winnebago, Blackfeet, all these tribes 
Um, I have a strong interest in Native American culture, and probably not surprising to a lot of people. Uh, my grandfather was uh, half Cherokee. This is a great book. I read this, uh, wow, I haven't read, I read this twice, but it's been a while. Uh, Brian Geisen's The Process. Um, I, you might know Geisen through his uh, association with uh, Bill Burroughs and others. Um, this is really good. Um, just a wild ride, this one. Really good. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. The process, Brian Geisen. Speaking of madness, Antonin Artad. Uh, this is a great anthology. This is also on City Lights Publishing. This is the one, what I think one of my favorites is, um, yeah, Fragments from a Journal in Hell. Um, Address to the Dalai Lama is in here. Just all his classics. Um, Revolt Against Poetry. Um, one of my favorite writings about Van Gogh, who I love Van Gogh. Van Gogh, the man suicided by society. To an artod. Anthology, really nice. This is a really good book on shamanism that I got. I got this not too long ago. Um, a few years ago. Um, I think Gene Hewson, who's kind of an authority on the subject, did the foreword. So, again, these, the, none of this should surprise anybody who knows me. Um, so, really nice, holistic type stuff. Really, really cool book on um, uh, the liquor absin, History in a Bottle. I like this a lot. This is a great book. It has uh, a lot of great reproductions and great art and great history of the drink and its different, in its place in French history and greater history um, and, you know, in its place with artists. It was a favorite uh, drink of, you know, a lot of artists, uh, obviously. Um, very good book. Historic more, but alcohol historic, or uh, Absin, History in a Bottle, I think, who wrote this? Barnaby Conrad III, uh, one of the great masters of all time, the portable William Blake. I, this has just about everything I think Blake wrote in here, um, or close to it, or at least kind of uh, Songs of Innocence and Experience, Verses and Fragments. There's no natural religion and all religions are one, which is true. Uh, the Young Blake, yeah, one of the true visionaries. In the history of the world, William Blake, Portable Blake, and Penguin. Penguin, great, great publishing house. He changes. Uh, I love poetry, obviously. Rainier, this is a really nice, kind of modern, um, selected poetry of Rainer Marie Rilke. Uh, yeah, very, uh, very moving. Um, there is something about when I, when I, when I always think of Rilke, I think of something I read where he, uh, though he suffered from from great depressions and whatnot. He never, he was always afraid to drive the demons out. He was afraid if he drove the demons out, the angels would leave, which always stuck with me. You know, I, I find that very relatable. Um, yeah, the selected poetry of Rene, Rainier Marie Rilke, really beautiful stuff. Speaking of which, this was a great find. I found this at Half Price Books. This is um, an anthology of contemporary spiritual writing, God in All Worlds. And this is, this is incredibly comprehensive. I mean, this covers everything from, I mean, every, just, just so much stuff from Jung, 
Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Havel, the Dalai Lama, Joseph Campbell, Philip Larkin, I mean, you name it, Ram Dass. Um, really, really great book if you're into spiritual stuff or find this stuff interesting. Um, by Lucinda Vardy, God in All Worlds. Really, really good. Uh, I pulled this out funny enough because it was relevant at the time. Uh, I reread this. I read this when I was younger, but I pulled it out again um, during the pandemic, especially. This is Camus, The Plague, because um, I thought it was kind of relevant to the situation at the time. And I have a bunch of Camus books. Um, one of the coolest records I've seen come into the shop, and we only had it one time, was a record of the only recorded recording I know of of Camus reading like his essays and whatnot in French, obviously. So, but um, yeah, the plague. One of my favorite of the Camus Camus work. Speaking of another master, uh, Dostoevsky, House of the Dead. This is one of the most harrowing reads. Um, this was basically the four years he spent in a Siberian prison camp and his experiences there. And um, it's like, like when you read this, it's like a documentary in your mind, you know? Because that's how when I read, I've, it's like I somehow, my imagination takes me into visual places or it's almost like I'm seeing it visually while I'm reading it. And, you know, it might not be, cor it might not be exactly that's correct, but I, I create, I, the way the writing of it's really good, like the, one of the masters, like Dostoevsky, it just, you know, House of the Dead, one of my favorite. This and Notes from the Underground are probably my favorite Dostoevsky books. Um, Penguin Classics. This was a cool find a long time ago. This is um, The Automatic Muse, Surrealist Novels by Robert Dinos. Georges Limbor, Michael uh, Lyris, and Benjamin Perret, one of the craziest of all the surrealists. And this is just four short novels of, of pure automatic writing, which a surrealist loved. Um, trying to, they're, I mean, ultimate, one of the ultimate goals, I guess, of surrealism, at least in some sense, was the, the complete liberate, total liberation of man Total liberation of heart, total liberation of mind, spirit, um, and just, you know, these, this is pretty amazing. It's not, obviously, it doesn't have a real linear quality to it. It's all over, but it's fascinating. And um, I got this um, at a bookstore on, on a remainder table. You know, the remainder tables, sometimes they'd have at bookstores where it's all stuff they can't sell or it's mark down and a lot of times I find these kind of books there and it's very very cool very interesting uh, this is great if you're in this surrealism um, and just creativity in general another wonderful book and I've had this forever I think I actually got this at the library high school or junior high somewhere around there one of those free books Paul Bowles the Sheltering Sky. Um, in fact, I, I might keep this out. I kind of want to read this again. I'm sure a lot of you know who Paul Bowles is or was. Um, this is considered like his best work. Um, incredible, like the imagery in here, from what I remember, is really amazing. Um, yeah, uh, wonderful book. I'm, I'm probably gonna reread that. One of my all-time favorite books, and probably not, this is on probably a lot of people's list. The, um, I would guess, it was on David Bowie's list, um, is Hubert Selby Jr.'s Last Exit to Brooklyn. I love this book. Uh, one of Lou Reed's favorite writers. Um, this is phenomenal, man. This I've read this a few times, like at least three um, over the years. Uh, Selby's. Here's another book called The Room that's just unbelievable too. But this is a classic for me. Last Exit, uh, Last Exit to Brooklyn, Hubert Selby Jr. Uh, a 
another poetry book. What's interesting about this is this guy is mainly known for his stories, but his poetry is really, really good and underrated. Uh, the Complete Poems of Stephen Crane, the American writer. Um, and what's interesting about this is I think a lot of these poems were written when he was in the uh, uh, war, possibly, around that time. Oh, maybe I'm just getting get confused with War is Kind, which is one of the books. Um, but these are wonderful. Um, yeah. Um, Black riders came from the sea, there was a clang, and clang of spear and shield, and clash and clash of hoof and heel. Wild shouts and the wave of hair and the rush upon the wind, thus the ride of sin. Yeah. Really cool. I, I, I would check out Crane's poetry. It's, I think it's better than his actually, his verse, in my opinion. This, I've had this for a long time. Hmm. Yeah, I should read that too. That's what's great about this. I, I'm rediscovering things. Um, one of my, f I love Robert Crumb. It is one of my favorite projects Crumb did. This is a uh, graphic, kind of graphic novel in small form about Franz Kafka, another writer. I like Kafka too, because he's very funny. <laughs> a lot of humor in Kafka, which a lot of people overlook, I think. Um, a lot of dark humor. This is fantastic. Read this a bunch of times. Love Crumb's work, obviously. Still living. Um, but this is one of my favorite things he did, Kafka. Um, just a really cool read. I, I Easy to read, too. And really good if you, you're interested in Kafka. Yeah, Robert Crumb, Kafka. And the last book is actually related to music, but not like in the way you might think. This is a book that I've read several times too. This is The Source of Music by uh, Sri uh, Chamoni. Chamoni. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Google right here. Probably back, if you're familiar, with, if you have the John McLaughlin, Carlos Santana record, um, oh crap. The one where they do all the Coltrane songs. Uh, you'll see him on the back between Carlos and um, John, he, they were disciples of his. Uh, and this is really just a book about the spiritual dimensions of music itself. Um, which kind of ties into this music, actually. Um, I'll just read a little bit of the back. Music means self-expansion and oneness. The self expands through music. The self that expands is not the individual self, but the unlimited self. Music is the expansion of the unlimited reality. Yeah. Um, yeah, music and spirituality, vital music and illumination music, becoming an instrument. These are just some of the chat. The soulful singer, mantras and chanting, Om, the mother of all mantras, listening with the heart. Um, yeah, this is a really easy read too and really full of wisdom um yeah source of music yeah one uh, amazing book so there you go that's just some books i have i might do another one because it's just kind of fun actually like revisiting things i haven't looked at in a while or even thought about really so thank you uh alan um go check alan i'm sure alan doesn't need my help but Go check out Alan's uh, book video and go check out some of Carm's older ones um, that Carm made. I think they're on his channel or maybe he has a book channel too. But those are really, really good and worthwhile too um, if you like books. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about all I got for everybody. Um, I hope you guys like this. I don't think it was too obtrusive. Um, 
maybe fitting for the video. In fact, this is this is in my I never showed this before. Um, this is um, Thomas Ware of Flute Songs of the Kiowa, Kiowa and Comanche. This was recorded um, uh, in Oklahoma, like by a creek, like live, like just out and out playing. He was just playing by a creek, and they recorded it. And this is on Indian House, the Native American late record label out of New Mexico. Very, very pure, like uh, kind of similar to Carlos Nakai, but Nakai's stuff is uh, more produced than this. This is like just like a field recording and has a uh, maybe somewhat simpler direct approach than Nakai, but um, a really, as you can hear, a beautiful record. It's very peaceful, so yeah. Uh, take care, guys. Um, hope everybody's well as usual, and um, thank you for all the comments and insights that you guys have left on my last few videos. I definitely appreciate it. Um, a lot of the reasons I even make these videos are for the the handful of uh, good friends I have out there that seem to enjoy these and seem to really get something from them. So that makes it at least somewhat worthwhile to me. So take care guys. Peace.